Hey friends, thanks for joining us again for another drink. I, I feel like today we need to have like a boxing bell <laughs> because it's a little bit different this week. Exactly. So we've been doing single spirit reviews and opening them up, giving them a taste. And today's a little different. We're going to do a head to head. I'm excited. It is the battle of the spirits. And head to head of one I've never had. Uh, the second I haven't had in a very long time. I don't think you've even had the second. I may not, but at least the brand I haven't since the 90s. Correct. This particular style wasn't out in the 90s, so. Very excited Ooh. to share these with Ooh. you. All right. Surprises all the way around. Shall we reveal? Let's do it. All right. So what we are doing is gin. Ooh. I'm suddenly feeling a little bit of Snoop Dogg passing through me. Feeling a little musical? Yeah, I am. I'm definitely <laughs> feeling that. Sipping on gin and juice. Mind on my money. Money on my mind. I'm definitely feeling it. I'm down for that. Okay. Okay. So, these don't have juice. It's just straight gin. It's <laughs> just straight gin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how it was enjoyed way back. So, gin is basically the original flavored vodka. Green neutral spirits have been around for a while, and it wasn't until about the 11th century, I guess, they started making it into medicinal tonics. And because juniper has very strong medicinal properties, clearly they're going to make a tonic from it. So gin traces its roots all the way back to the 11th century. So that's like 1000 AD. Wow. So because it's juniper, juniper was actually used in the plague. Well, not to cause the plague. But <laughs> yeah, let's clarify those, that. <laughs> <laughs> those Renaissance plague masks with the beaks. Yeah. They would put juniper oil in the little tip of the beak, and it was the thought that the, the essence of that juniper would protect the wearer of the mask from the plague. Interesting. I didn't know that. Well, I know that as far as the use of it legally or illegally, during 1695 to 1735, there was basically a free-for-all, no licenses. So it was a gin craze at that point. <laughs> we go government. I know it. I know it. And, you know, <laughs> thanks to England's import tax on booze, uh, it just really fueled this. Well, of course. If you're taxing what you're importing into your country and you're giving free rain to home distillers or companies to distill gin, of course, every single person, all of the poor people, you, you're not going to be able to afford French wine. You're going to go for what you can afford. Yeah. And with gin having its roots as a medicinal tonic, it's a cure-all. Take it for anything. We hope. <laughs> We're not promising it'll fix everything. <laughs> right, right. So what are we, which ones are we having our head-to-head -head battle with today? Well, today we've got Karakin, and this is a Cincinnati local gin. Woo, back home. And it's going head-to-head -head with Tangeray. Oh, all right. So Tangeray, That's obviously. big boy. Oh, yes. You will see it in all the stores. Yep. Videos. Music, yes. yes, it is yes. a worldwide known brand. And it is the number one brand. I'm not surprised. Yep. Not surprised at all. So Karakin, being Cincinnati, Cincinnati local, they named their distillery Karakin because that's actually the name, the term for elements that's found in smoke from a forest fire that triggers the regeneration of the forest. Hmm. So the idea behind it, obviously, is that it's going to bring something back to life. Okay. 
I like that. Now, with it being here locally, mm -hmm. which is awesome, you, you picked that one for the competition. They were founded in 2017, and their goal was to bring spirits back to Whiskey Hollow, a place used by Joseph Ferris in the late 1700s. Now, they supposedly have the larger, or not larger, the <laughs> largest copper pot still in Ohio at a thousand gallons. That's a big pot. That's massive. <laughs> it is just massive. So I chose Aura to go against the Rangpur because Aura promises these notes and flavor profiles of orange peel and vanilla beans. So this is a flavored gin. Interesting. Okay. So it's it's diverging. It still has the the elements of gin. You're going to have the coriander and the juniper and those other traditional spice elements, but flavored gins should have those in the background and you should also they're also bringing in other flavors. So with Aura, it should be bringing in orange peel and vanilla. So when I he heard that, I'm just like, oh, I bet that's going to be sweet. I like it. Going against the big dog. Yes. Tangare. Yes. All right. And you already said their number one seller and the U.S. is their largest market. I wonder why that is. <laughs> <laughs> probably a number of good reasons. Uh, Tangare actually started in 1830 and they were the traditional dry gin. They were the only facility to survive the Axis bombings in World War II, which... That's incredible. There yeah. wasn't a whole lot that survived. No, no, there really, really wasn't. So after that, production moved to Scotland. Okay. Okay. So started in London in 1830, and then after World War II, relocated to Scotland, mm -hmm. where there was a lot less bombs dropped. Yes. <laughs> so the Rangpur variation of Tangare, it's not their traditional. Rangpur is also a flavored gin. Okay. It promises a very strong citrus flavor that they're going to bring in from Rangpur limes, and then ginger and bay leaves. And that's added in the final distillation process. So it basically starts out as traditional tangare and then right at the end, they put in the twist. Mm. Okay. Are we ready to go ahead and try these two? Sure, which one do you wanna try first? Let's go with Aura first. Aura first? Okay, yes. you've got the Aura on your side. Okay. So there and there. Yep. So this is the aura. That does not smell like a traditional gin to me. And I'm not really picking up a lot of what you had said about the orange peel and vanilla beans. I don't even smell juniper. Give it a taste. This is reminding me of like white lightning. Now that you mention it, <laughs> it does have that, that very specific fragrance. Oh, we still forgot to do our cheers <gasps> again. Can't forget that. No. I'm too excited. Wow. That has a bite to it. Uh, yes. Not quite the kick as White Lightning, but I'm, I'm not getting the flavors. I'm just not getting the flavors at all on this. I'm really not either. And I'm normally very sensitive to that sort of thing. Yeah. It's, it is definitely very strong. Um, I taste corn it that white lightning element really yeah. just comes forward for me yeah 
this is not one that I would sip on straight. I would need to mix this with something to bring it down a little bit. Some juice? Maybe some juice. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, I'm going to set this. Or, as my dad loves, is gin and tonics. I, it, I, don't, I don't know that I would put tonic in this. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think I would, I would put a stronger flavor to it. Okay. I'm set that aside. All right, we'll set this one over. Okay. Tangare. Tangare. So this one is the Rancor. America's and the world's. Well, maybe not the Rancor, but Tangare. 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 Wow. Mm. So right away, the limes. Mm-hmm. Citrus. And that, that juniper, that Christmas tree yeah. smell is very present right there. Wow. It reaches out and smacks you right in the face. That is a gin. That definitely smells like a gin. It's almost like a smell of a, like a watered down or a warm Sprite or Seven Up. Yeah, if you left it underneath a Christmas tree and some of the pine needles fell in it. Ew. <laughs> that juniper has that. It's it's a it's a citrusy berry, but it also has that that piney flavor. All right. Well, we'll find out about the piney flavor. <laughs> Oh, wow. So that is definitely fruity. Yes. That is only missing the tonic. It has the lime in there already. You don't need that, that twist from the bar. Wow, that's delicious. I think that is really, really good. That on some ice, mm. that yes. would be Chill. really good. Really, really good. So, significant less on the back end warmth, but the citrus is just all the way through. It doesn't fade away, it's mm -hmm. just continues through. And it has a nice lingering. That is really, really good. I, I'm sold. All right, so who wins? It's a knockout. <laughs> I mean, it's a first round knockout. It really is. Yeah. I mean, and, and now it's like putting a lightweight against a heavyweight. But from a flavored or supposed a flavored type of gin against another flavored type of gin, it's good to really kind of see the difference between these two and, and their distilling. Yes. So perhaps later on, we're going to have to put our winner up against a different. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. I mean, see who wins round two. Yeah, it has to defend the title. <laughs> <laughs> we have to. So, I've got a surprise for you. A surprise. Oh, yes. We've I been, was not prepared for a surprise. We've been doing head-to-head. -head, we've been talking about gin. And um, I, I found a little surprise when I was out shopping for this episode. And I've got a blind taste right here that only I know what it is. You don't? <laughs> now I'm really, really excited. <laughs> so when I told you we were doing gin, what's mm -hmm. the first thing that popped into your head? Uh, well, there's probably several things. One, it's not my favorite. Okay. Um, two, my dad really loves it. Okay. And I'm... I'm really going in kind of blind. <laughs> so no songs. Well, of course, yeah. Yeah. With, with Snoop. Yeah. Yes, with gin and juice. I see a purple bottle. Purple bottle. This is indigo. This is actually Snoop Dogg's flavored gin <laughs> that he just released to the market. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So. Man. I've got my little note card here. Don't judge me. I couldn't let him see it. So Indigo Gin, obviously it's developed by the king of gin and juice. Wow. And it's a, it's a remix. This is how he's marketing it. This a is, remix, this is of a course. This is a remix <laughs> of your seven traditional botanicals, basically gin, and then it's infused with all natural strawberry flavor. Ooh. So you get that 
And it's in a purple bottle. It's in a purple bottle. (laughs) (laughs) That's just, that's pimp, man. That's pimp. Indigo gins are actually really popular right now. So we might have to buy one of the indigo gins to put up against Tangare. But so the reason indigo is not in our head to head is these two bottles are actually at the exact same price point. And indigo is a little bit more. Wow. Okay. I'm... I am really shocked and excited because we talked about gin and juice before the episode. We, <laughs> I was even, I didn't tell him a thing. Belting out the lyrics, so to I actually see something from thing. Snoop is <laughs> awesome. Okay, so this is the indigo. No, it, are you? Sh- no, it's indago pronounced indigo is it mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's got d-o-g-g-o <laughs> okay all right we're gonna roll with it i actually looked up i didn't want to be embarrassed i actually looked up a couple of videos on how to how to pronounce it it's <laughs> indigo okay all right so this is indigo wow that is an entirely different smell wow <laughs> this is like a Strawberry milkshake or uh, strawberry Fanta. Those hard candies. Hard candy, yeah. Those hard candies that just appear out of nowhere. No one knows where they're coming from. Man, I, I wish you guys had smell vision because <laughs> this just wipes out both of those from a notes, you know, on your nose standpoint. It depends on if you're a traditionalist. I don't smell any juniper. I would take this hands down. (laughs) Okay, I am dying to try this now. Okay. There is the juniper. Yes. That's where I... The strawberry taste is still there, but it's minty. That's not mint. That's the juniper. I I know, but that's just kind of how I... I say it. You know what this actually reminds me of? What? Drinking gin and juice in college. Wow. <laughs> wow. We did. we did. I'm trying to think what what this I I having a difficult time com- really articulating what this tastes like. But that strawberry flavor just rolls right on through. Very, it, very little warmth on the back end. And, and, and the best way I can describe it is the term dry. Yes. Because my first experience with gin, I, I really didn't like it. And the reason I didn't like it is because I, I took a sip of it and it just seemed to suck all of the moisture out of my mouth. And so that's what I've always equated to a dry flavor profile. So I think... What Snoop has managed to do with Indigo Gin is he's really, this blend really does, to me, taste like gin and juice. It has that dryness from the gin. You have that fruit forward profile and nose, and it's a, it's a little bit sweet, but not sugary. No, no, it's, it's not sweet as in the taste, but it's definitely the smelling. Man. I would definitely have a cocktail with that. Yes. I'm I'm really tempted to see what is a good mixer with that. It doesn't destroy the strawberry flavor from it. He's got all sorts of cocktail recipes. You go to the Indigo website. We'll have to do that then. So the price point difference is these are about um, $23 and the Indigo is going for about $30 dollars for the regular size bottle this obviously was not thirty dollars that's still right in our budget area it is yeah it is so the goal with the head-to-head is we always want to put two spirits together that have the same idea behind them and the same price point yeah of course you yeah, to make it fair yeah i love this well done what an awesome surprise thank you man i have to have surprises more often yeah i'll have to I'll have to surprise you on one then, too. Oh, yeah. For sure. 
setting a precedent. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I definitely want to get a larger bottle of that <laughs> and enjoy it. Have any of you actually had Snoops or have you had the Rangpur from Tangeray? Or have you tried the Aura yeah, from it, it, Karakut? Yeah, if you're local and you had actually Aura, I'm not sure how far wide it's distributed or if it's just distributed local here. I honestly do not know. But yeah. if you've had any Karakin spirits, let us know. Yeah. It, gin is not their only spirit. Yeah. If you're a gin lover, what's your mix of choice if you're not drinking it straight? I'd love to be able to try some of that. And if you're a gin lover, what's your favorite bottle? Yeah, we can try those too. Absolutely. Well, you ready I'm, to call it a night? I am. You gonna sip on some more gin and juice? I'm ready to lean back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us. Have a great night.